The newest game in the Paper Mario series, The Origami King, has caused a lot of controversy within the fan base. And while this isn't a review of that game, this is going to be discussing my issues with the current status of the Paper Mario series. Because trust me, there's a lot of points that I see thrown across online that kind of tries to devalue what people have to say against Sticker Star, Color Splash, and this new game. And it's not just because they're different as to why I really don't like them. I just think these games are inherently flawed as games on their own, not just as part of the Paper Mario series. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them entirely from the first two games. Let's not cross the lines whatsoever. I'm not going to be saying they're bad because they don't have a story like the original two games. Or, I guess, characters, because these aren't RPGs. These are, as Nintendo describes them, comedic adventures. So let's just throw that away as comedic adventures how do they hold up? How do these, at least the first two games, because I haven't played Origami King, how do they hold up? So, stick a star, let's go to the thing that I think most people will agree with me before I get onto probably the screen stuff, the battle system. So, as you know, stick a star and color splash both use disposable items. And while inherently that might not be bad on its own, the fact that you have to save them, you don't know when to use them, you are just giving them left, right and centre so they don't even feel that powerful and that great, and the fact that you don't gain anything from battles other than coins to buy more of these disposable items to use in battle makes a completely pointless loop, making you not want to battle. You get nothing for it, why would you want to do it? Why even add a battle system when it is completely just nullified by this insane design flaw? If this was any game, I would be complaining. This isn't smart. This isn't fun. It's just dumb. I'm sorry. It's dumb. Why design a system where you just don't want to use it? It's like having a platformer, but jumping does nothing. You can jump but you don't need to. A level is a straight line of nothing, and you can jump, but what does it do? Nothing. Does it get you higher platforms? No. Does it make you go faster? No. So why do it? Just run forwards to win. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's kind of a crap comparison, but that's the best I can come up with for now. Basically, Battle System just doesn't offer any incentives. Not only that, but the system is incredibly butchered from what we had before. This isn't comparing it to the first two games specifically, as it is just comparing it to every RPG that have these action-based battle systems. When you have attacks, where the only way to execute them is with one single button, is that fun? Why can't I use the analog stick? Why can't I use the B button? The triggers? Why can't I use all these buttons to have more unique moves to use? Why with the hammer do I have to press the A button at the right time? Why can't I charge it up, let go, give him a whack and make it feel more powerful and satisfying to use? Why is it just wait for it to time, press the A button once? Is that intuitive? I don't know, because the jump does the same thing. I guess they want to make it easier, but by making it easier, you're making it less satisfying. So I, I'm not a fan of that, and that started with Sticker Star, where they started to butcher the actual commands in battle. I'm trying to remember if you had to use any other buttons other than the A button for these commands, and I don't think you did. I guess the Origami King, you've got the puzzle aspect, but from what I've been hearing, the battles aren't really battles as they are puzzles and if you figure out the puzzle you pretty much won the battle and especially when the boss battles have completely separate battles to the ring system that don't even connect at all it is completely dumb what's the point in practicing for the battles if not only if you don't get anything but it's not going to help you for the bosses because they have a completely different system huh what? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So, we got that out of the way. Number two, uniqueness. People claim that the Origami King is unique. It's trying something new, and that's why people don't like it. How is it new if it's literally copying the formula from the last two games? That's not new. That's the same. It's got some new things. It's got the ring battle system, but it's got the confetti from Color Splash, which is just the paint. It's got the generic enemies. It's got the very similar battle commands. In fact, I think they're identical battle commands. It doesn't have a super emphasis on the story. The new game is literally almost identical to what Color Splash has done, except with a new battle system. So to claim that people don't like it because it's not unique just seems like a false narrative because it's not unique, flat out. Yeah, the ring battle system, sure, that's unique, that's different, 
but different doesn't inherently mean good. Like, something's different. All right, so instead of jumping in this 2D platformer, you now do a dive where you don't get as much height and you don't go fast. It's different. Is it good? I wouldn't say so. So, would you? Like, that is not a fair argument. I'm sorry, that's not a fair argument. Different, good, same, bad. What? If something works, you want to do it again and build on top of it. Right? <laughs> Another thing I don't like is that people say the new game is a step in the right direction. A step in the right direction. They got this part right. They're getting better. They're learning. Question. Why did they have to learn something they've already done? So if we're waiting four years for a new Paper Mario game, we have waited 12 years so far for people to get what they wanted and we're still not there. 12 whole years. 12. 12. 12. I know I said I wasn't going to compare to the first two games, and I'm not really. That's just a little gripe I have, so I'm going to throw that out of the way. So, another thing I don't like about the current Mario Paper Mario games is the focus on the paper of Paper Mario. Sure, it's different, and it's something the first few games didn't really do that much. It's cool that the worlds are fully realized in paper. That's a cool aesthetic, but I think the abundance of paper jokes and visual gags with the paper, I think it's just a bit too much of a gimmick. I feel like it's a tired feature to have. It's kind of a given that, yeah, this is Paper Mario and paper is the aesthetic. I know that's a thing that's only me. I'm not a fan of the huge paper aesthetic anymore. I liked it when it was more subtle. Like, it was still there. I and mean, in, let's say, a Thousand Year Door, you still had the transform mechanics. But I didn't like the whole game being sold as it's paper. Please buy this game because it's paper. And then another issue I have with Sticker Star and Color Splash, I'm hoping this doesn't apply to the Origami King, is the level base structure of go from point A to point B. It makes the levels feel a bit insignificant, especially when there's like multiple endings like right next to each other. It's not really fun. You're literally just walking from point A to point B. I don't want to battle because the battle shift is completely pointless and you don't gain anything from it. So what am I doing? I'm just walking from one scenario to another scenario and that's it, nothing in between. Walk here to here, that's the game. And if that's the game, then you better have some goddamn good level design to back that up. And honestly, I don't think these games do. Paper Mario's Jump is like super butchered, so it, is it really made for super hardcore platforming? I don't think so. So what are we gonna do here? We need scenarios, we need things that are interesting, possibly characters possibly a cool story, but we don't have that, so what do we have instead? We have to rely on platforming, and is the platforming in Paper Mario really, like, up there with the best platformers? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think it is at all. I don't even know what to say, it just kinda doesn't match well. Paper Mario was first designed as an RPG, and they've kept what makes an RPG an RPG, they've kept the systems but they took away the incentive to battle, they took away the characters, and they took away the story, and they claim it as like these comedic fun adventures, but are they actually adventures when there's actually nothing in the levels? Like there are scenarios, Color Splash had more scenarios like the Haunted Mansion place, and that was neat, but I don't think the game held that standard for that long. I know it's just a me thing, but when I play these games, I just get bored within 20 minutes because I feel like nothing I'm doing has any sort of agency or impact or anything. I just feel like I'm playing the game just to play it. I'm kind of like forcing myself to like this game. I don't know, I just don't get a fun experience from these games. And I just want to add one more case as to why different isn't necessarily bad in a positive way that I actually liked. And that game is called Super Paper Mario. That game ditched the battle system entirely and decided, you know what, we want to be a 2D platformer. He has multiple characters, he is partners-esque, and we'll give them abilities, and we'll still give you a story and characters to explore. And what that did was actually give people an incentive to play through the platforming, even if those people found the platforming to be kind of bleh. I thought the platforming wasn't the best in that game, but the story kept me going. The characters kept me going. The unique world kept me going. And that's another issue I have with the latest entries. The world feel generic. They're not interesting. The environments feel old. Entire grasslands, desert lands, snow lands, blah, 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 jungle, volcano, blah. Even in Origami King, I've not seen any environments that stick out to me whatsoever. I remember a grassland from the beginning of the game. 
Toad Town? The volcano place? An autumn place? Like, these places don't feel all that distinct. Literally, not to compare again, but Rogueport felt unique straight away, and that was the very start of the game. You had a grassland, but you literally started in Rogueport. And the grassland was literally the first chapter, the very first chapter. It got way more unique after that, especially Twilight Town, you know, that's pretty unique. God, you know what I've realized while making this video? It is very hard to not compare because the first two games were so great and they really had something there. They truly had something. They had everything that worked. I don't care if we don't get the same battle system. I don't care if we don't get the same structure. They can do a world map. I don't give a shit. But I feel like if they're going to keep the same overworld structures and they still want to keep a battle system, then they need substance for that. They need to bring characters back. Like in this new game, we have partners, but you don't even control them and they just go away after a certain amount of time. Granted, they could still be good characters and that would be a cool incentive to continue with the game. But when the characters are also just generic by Mario baddies, it kind of takes away their personality a bit and their uniqueness. Sure, the writing can shine through for them, but at first glance, and if you're not hooked into the game within that hour span, you are going to be bored. You are not going to continue playing, you're going to quit, and you might miss out on something that could have been really good. First impressions are so important, and when the first impression of this game is, oh, the partners are generic Mario enemies, the worlds are generic, the actual enemies themselves are generic, the battle system looks like a gimmick, and the game looks like Color Splash, the game people didn't really like that much, well, that's not a good first impression, Nintendo. It's kind of bad. I really hope this video hasn't come across as me just morning this has kind of just been me throwing out every single opinion i've got on the current series right now i will have a review of paper mario once i beat the game after it comes out so i guess look forward to that i am going in with open arms i want to like it i really do but everything i've seen doesn't look fun doesn't look enticing doesn't look like it's changing stuff up enough for me to like even if it's not like the first two games it still doesn't look all that interesting the one thing that i do like is that the world isn't a world map anymore it's all one interconnected place that's cool that's about it that's the only thing that has me hooked at this current moment i hope i'm wrong i hope i like it please let me like it that's it so if you agree with any of my points if you've got your own points and you want to even combat my points on the current series because i'm just not a big fan let me know in the comments this is all about discussion on this channel i want disagreement i want people to discuss having the same hive mind of just yeah you're right you're right you're right that's boring i want you to disagree with me so if you do let me know and why in the comments below i'll catch you all in the next one guys peace out